what is going on today guys so today i want to talk about the best possible loadouts in the finals so what i mean by the best possible loadouts is the best possible things you could be running for your specialization your weapon your gadgets and of course your reserve for all the builds that being the light medium and heavy now starting off with the medium builds for specializations i think by far the best overall specialization is the healing beam the healing beam is just really really good for keeping your teammates alive keeping them in the fight and allowing them to stay up and stay in the fight and keep on fighting instead of them having to kind of veer off and take a break um to heal up or even die because they're super low health and they can't fight anymore so the healing beam is extremely good and i think is overall the best but if you're not running the healing beam or you don't want to run the healing beam then the next best option would be the recon sense the recon sense allows you to see enemies through the entire map so as you can see there's the little red um kind of glowing right there and glowing over there those are actually enemies and see there's enemies over here so that's what recon sense does it allows you to see through the entire map and see exactly where the enemies are it's weaker at a distance so the further the enemies are the less uh accurate and the less um effective it's going to be but the closer the enemies are the more effective it's going to be and the more accurate it's going to be as you see the closer i get you can kind of see it a lot better and know that when i turn this corner there's going to be two enemies right there as for weapons when it comes to the medium build i think the best overall weapon is the akm i think the akm is great for anyone of all skill levels whether you're a beginner you're intermediate or you're like a pro level player the akm is a great option for dealing sustained damage over time because of the fact that not only is it strong and i think it's pretty accurate but it has 36 bullets in the mag so you could fight multiple enemies at a time without having to reload which is really really nice and it comes in really handy especially if you're fighting against a team of heavy because you can put a lot of damage into the heavy shield very very quickly allowing you to get their shield down and actually get the kill on them a lot quicker again from the amount of ammo that it has but if you don't want to use the akm and you want something a little bit stronger a little bit more accurate then i recommend the f car the f car has this nice little hollow sight on it so it's a little bit more accurate and it deals a lot more well i wouldn't say a lot more but it, deal, it deals a little bit more damage than the akm the trade-off is it only has 20 rounds in a mag so i would say if you're if you're someone who likes to push flanks or play the off angles per se your teammate here your team is playing here they're fighting the enemies right here and you're someone who likes to kind of push around to an off angle on the side here then the f car is perfect for you i think this gun is great and is your gun but if you're someone who likes to play with your team and especially if you have like a heavy or even two heavies on your team and you like to stay behind them and kind of help out dealing damage then the akm is definitely the better option as for gadgets i would say by far the best gadget you should always be running is the defibrillators the defibrillators is by far the best gadget for the medium it allows you to get your teammates up quickly and then oh, and then per se you're running the healing beam you can heal them up real quick and get back into the fight and start killing enemies again quicker but yeah i i would say it's not always good in every scenario if you're completely safe and there's no enemies around just go for the full revive they'll come back with full health and they'll be good to go because the thing with the defibrillators is when you revive them with defibrillators they only come back with half health that's why you need the healing beam to heal them back up 
to full health so they can get back in the fight quickly. But even though they still come back with half health, it's still a lot better to revive them with the defibrillators because they can just get back into that fight really quickly. And it can honestly be the difference between you wiping a team and you not wiping a team. Um, because let's say you and a guy are fighting, you run out of ammo, he's really low, you know he might win, slide off, revive your teammate quick, your teammate comes back with more health than the enemy, teammate turns, fights the enemy, cleans him up, bada bing, bada boom, you win that gunfight. So defibrillators are really, really good. Next gadget I highly, highly recommend is the jump pad. The jump pad is so, so, so good. For getting you up to high ground and giving you an advantage in the game so as you see i can now get up to the high ground get on top of this building with the jump pad now i have the high ground and i could fight the enemies down below i could kill the enemy up here kill some more enemies down below and most likely win the gunfight because i have the high grounds plus it allows you just to get around the map a hell of a lot quicker I can get over here quicker, hit another jump pad, get over here, you know, whatever the case might be. The jump pad allows you to just move quickly and get high ground, which is so, so nice. The next gadget I recommend is actually a pick between three. And I think either one of these three is a great option. That being the sonar grenade the zip line or the gas grenade um currently i'm running the gas grenade and it's really great for dealing quick damage to the enemy and getting them out of uh an angle maybe they're holding a certain angle or holding a certain uh head glitch or whatever i can get them off that head glitch very easily by throwing gas grenade or most importantly getting them off the objective getting them off that cash out when they're trying to steal or maybe the cash outs on the last few seconds, I can throw that gas grenade onto there and get them off of that objective and prevent them from stealing because of the gas grenade. But the sonar grenade is also really, really good. As I could toss the sonar grenade and it'll scan all the opponents in the area, allowing me to gain information on who's pushing me. Um, and that allows me to get the drop on the enemy and kill them. So I know the enemy's there. Bada bing, bada boom. Kill them. And I got all that information just from the sonar grenade. So it's really, really good. Especially if the objective is in the house. And you want to throw a sonar grenade on the ground and see who's pushing into the house. Now that sonar grenade can give you a heck of a lot of information. Next best thing is the zip line. Zip line is just like with the um the jump pad it allows you to get to high ground quicker um you know so you could kill the guys up top get the high ground kill the guys down below and it allows you just to get around the map a lot quicker i recommend if you're running a composition of a medium and double heavy meaning you're the medium and you have two heavies on the team then you should run both the jump pad and the zip line as it allows your heavies to get around the map a lot quicker and gives them the mobility they need to get to the objective quicker and help out so that's why both the jump pad and zip line are really good and why you could definitely definitely run both of them at the same time and they will help out your team tremendously. Now, as for reserves, I just take everything that I that I just recommended and put them within my reserve. So if I'm running, you know, zip line, I'll throw the gas grenade and the sonar grenade in the reserve. If I'm running gas grenade, I'll throw the zip line and sonar grenade in the reserve. If I'm running AKM, then I throw the F car in the reserve and vice versa. The only outliner within my reserve is the model 1887. This is just something fun to use that I like to keep in my reserve because I don't think there's anything else that I need in my reserve that's extremely useful that I would need to take out. So this is just something fun I like to keep in my reserve because it's fun to use. I wouldn't recommend it if you're playing ranked or in tournaments or anything. I would just recommend using it. If you are playing quick play and you just want something fun to use, then this is really a fun gun to, to use and 
play around with. But that's the only reason why it's in my reserve. It's not there for any sort of competitive advantage. And it's definitely not something I take out when playing ranks. So moving on to the light class, I'd say the best ability or best specialization overall by far is the cloaking device. The cloaking device allows you to go invisible for I, I believe 12 seconds at a time. So you're able to push a flank on the enemy and kill them without them knowing you're even there. So it's really, really useful in getting behind the enemy, getting really close to them and getting the kill. I, I think you should 100% always be running the invisibility specialization no matter what. Um, I think that it is, it is so much better than the other two specializations for the light right now that it, I really wouldn't even run any other, um, specialization, but if you're going to run another specialization for the light, you really don't want to use the cloaking device, then I definitely don't recommend the grappling hook. I, it would be the evasive dash. The evasive dash is really cool as it allows you to move in it will allows you to dash in whatever direction you click so if i want to go forward i can go forward if i want to go backwards i can go backwards if i want to go if i want to go right or i can go right and if i want to go left wait for it to recharge here if i want to go left i can go left so confining all those together you can kind of move quickly around the enemy um like if i'm in a gunfight and you know, I have the shoddy and I want to get close really quickly. Bam, invasive dash right into them. Um, or same if I'm in a fight, I have no ammo. Oh shit, let me get out of here. Evasive dash out of there. So the that's why I think the evasive dash is another great option. But really, I the cloaking device is your best bet. As for weapons, um, I think by far the best weapon, no matter what, is going to be the double barrel shotgun. Um, it's just so, so good right now. You can one tap a light, two tap a heavy if you're close enough, and two tap a medium. Oh, I missed my second shot there. Um, the thing is you have to be very, very accurate with it. You cannot miss your shots. You have to be direct, but if you're direct, you can get easy, easy two taps on both the heavy and the medium, and then one tap the light. But again, you need to be accurate and you need to be very, very close. So that's the trade off of this weapon. While it is really good, gotta be accurate, gotta hit your shots, and you gotta be very close up. I think the next best option for um, the light as for, for weapons at least is the xp xp 54 um this is just such a good smg it does a lot of damage very quickly it has this really really nice optic on it and it just kind of it's it's if you don't want to run the shotgun you want something with a little bit more range to it then run this gun because it is it just shreds through enemies like it, it's just so good um and in my opinion is your next best bet when it comes to weapons now you'll see i also have a third weapon which is the v9s this is just kind of a fun gun that i like to run i wouldn't say it's anything extremely competitive it is good but it would it's not something that i would run compared to the other options it's just something fun that i like to use once in a while um it's not something i would use on like ranks or in tournaments or anything just again, like the model 1887, or I'll take it out if I'm playing quick play or whatever, and I just want to have fun with it. I want to take out my pistol and just see how fast I could spam it. That's just what it's there for. That's why it's in my reserve. And, but I wouldn't recommend it for a competitive nature. I'd say either the shotgun or the double barrel, uh, or the shotgun or the SMG, um, the XP-54. As for gadgets, I think the number one best gadget for the light is the stun gun. Um, 
Gun Gun doesn't do any justice here on the, on the, you know, these bots or whatever you want to call them. But pretty much what it does is when you stun an enemy, it makes them completely immobile. So they can't run, they can't slide, they can't move that well. They can only turn and it's slowly. They also can't ADS at all. And it takes them off of whatever they're using. So let's say they have their, let's say you're heavy and you have your shield up. If you get stunned, you'll instantly put your shield down. Or let's say you have a grenade out, you go to throw the grenade, oh, you get stunned. You're now, your grenade gets taken out and you automatically get thrown back to your weapon. And now you have to try to kill them with low mobility and only hip firing with your weapon so it can be really effective if you kind of stun them and then move around them um and get the kill i definitely wouldn't recommend like stunning them and then just standing in front of them because they still can shoot from the hip so they still can gun you down you have to use your mobility as a light to your advantage and kind of uh move around them when you stun them so that they can't hit you and you can get that kill. The next best gadget for the light is hands down by far the glitch grenade. The glitch grenade will disable the enemy's HUD and disable any gadget they're using and any of their specialization they're using. So if you're playing as a light player, they won't be able to use their cloaking device. If they're a heavy player, they won't be able to use their mesh shield um so on and so forth and they won't be able to throw grenades or anything for i'm not sure the exact amount of time but it's a good few seconds that they can't use their stuff all because of this grenade. and as you see the radius is pretty big on it too now finally the last gadget i'd say it's between three four actually i'd say it's between four things one of them i don't have um but i'd say you could choose between a regular grenade of course, he had to move. Regular grenade, um, which is really good. Yeah, especially if you are, if you have the plank, you know, you just around them, and maybe there's a heavy with a shield up right here. Throw a grenade at them, get close, pop them, and should be dead. Um, next thing I would say is actually, the next thing would be the pyro grenade. Pyro grenade is great for dealing damage dealing a good amount of damage but not only is it good at dealing damage you could throw it on the cash out to prevent people from getting cash out and you can use it to take away any gas so let's say let me wait for it to recharge here all right so now that i have the pyro grid again i'm gonna grab this gas i'm gonna throw the gas down oh no there's a bunch of gas well, i can throw the fire and that gets rid of all the gas. So that's what it's great for as well. Um, Cause a lot of people like to use, throw gas on the objective or use gas mines. So fire green is really good for counteracting that. Next thing I would recommend is the vanishing bomb. Um, this can make your teammates invisible and make you invisible. If you throw it on the ground, oh, now I am invisible and it'll make your teammate next to you invisible. If you throw it next to a teammate, so it's great for if you're if you don't have your invisibility or you're not running invisibility, then you could just use the vanishing bomb to help you out. Last thing I'd recommend is the breaching charge. This is good for dealing small amounts of damage. It's not as crazy as like a C4 and RPG, but as you see, it can still do a little bit of damage to get you in and out of places um, quickly if needed. And let's say you're like on the on the roof over here. You could throw one on the roof, blow the roof open and drop in. It's good for situations like that. And yeah, um, that's pretty much everything for the light. Finally, moving on to the heavy, the heavy, by far the best specialization, no doubt in my mind. I, it's, I think it's a clear winner over both of these is the mesh shield. I think you should always, always, always run the mesh shield over any specialization um that gets offered for the heavy it's just so good um it has 1100 health like that's a crazy amount of health and it can block any incoming damage coming at you and it's just so beneficial for you and your team um 
see if this guy will start shooting at me. He's just blocking all incoming damage. Which is really, really great um, for helping your you and your team out as... Where'd my gun go? There it is. Um, it's just really great for helping your team out to protect your team, protect yourself, and keep you and your team alive. If you don't want to run the mesh shield, which again, I highly recommend the mesh shield, you should be running the mesh shield. If you really don't want to run the mesh shield, the other two options are all right. Like the charge in slam is good. Um, you could charge at enemies with it and you could charge through buildings with it. Um, and the goo gun, you could kind of put cover wherever you want. You build cover wherever you want. And you could actually completely like slow down. Well, it's not doing it to the bots, but if you do it to an actual person, you could like slow them down, get them stuck in the goo. But it's really, again, it's nowhere near as good as the mesh shield. You should be running the mesh shield by far. As for weapons, I think there's two clear winners for the weapons. The first one being shotgun. The shotgun is just so good for up close engagements. Um, it just fries through health so easily. It's not, um, I wouldn't say it's like the greatest thing in the world, uh, cause the other option can be really, really good too. So, so I wouldn't say it's the number one gun as it kind of goes. The other option is, I'd say just as good, but for a different reason. But if you're someone who plays more up close, if you like to throw up your mesh shield and then pick out your shotgun. I don't know why my gun keeps bugging out like this. But yeah, throw up your mesh shield, take the shotgun out. You know, when you get close to them, it's a really, really, really great option. The next best option is hands down the Lewis gun. The Lewis gun is the best, the second best, or I'd say, like I said, it goes hand in hand with the shotgun, but it's it's more so if you like to play at more of a range. Um, it just deals so much damage so quickly and just rips through enemies. Um, so if you're someone who likes to play at maybe a little bit longer, range um you know medium long range you know you're not someone who likes to play up close then use the lewis gun because it's so so good then i do have the sledgehammer in here the sledgehammer is not good it's just again my fun option um if i'm playing quick play or whatever and um i want something fun to use then i will take out the sledgehammer or if i have like a daily challenge to to deal melee damage i'll take out the sledgehammer but it's by no means something i would run in a competitive nature i wouldn't run it in ranked or in tournaments at all it's just something there to have fun with um but by no means is it something that like i would always be using it's definitely either the lewis gun or the shotgun so as for gadgets i'd say the number one I i'd say honestly all these three gadgets are the best i wouldn't even touch what i have in my reserve i they're just kind of in my reserve i, I don't really use them at all I, i'd say these three gadgets are the best hands down and i wouldn't really touch anything else one being the rpg you could just deal so much damage with it you could one shot lights with it um you could blow stuff up with it you could blow through walls with it ceilings whatever you can get the objective down from one level to the level you're on so let's say the objective is above you you could go ahead and shoot the ceiling with the rpg the objective will fall and now it's on the level you want it to be it's just it's so 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 good and so useful and if you're not running it then you're honestly just trolling next best option is definitely the dome shield the dome shield is self-explanatory it puts out a dome shield and it while it is it doesn't have the most health in the world. It's really good for, let's say, reviving your teammate. Um, you know, you throw the dome shield down, your medium can come in, defibrillate them, heal them, get them back up, all while dome shield's protecting them. And it's really good for stealing an objective. 
as well. You can throw it on the objective, steal the objective um, while the dome shield's protecting you. And it's even good for get, getting in a gunfight. So you could, if your mesh shield, if you don't have any more of your mesh shield, they took it all out, take out your dome shield, throw it down on the ground, and then you could fight around your dome shield. That could be the difference between you winning and losing. Finally, the last best gadget um, for the heavy is definitely, definitely the C4. And there's one clear, clear reason for it. Let me find it. So there is the thing called nuking in this game. You can take any barrel, whether it's a flame barrel, a gas barrel, or an explosive barrel. You throw two C4 on it, pick it up, make sure C4 is equipped while you pick it up, and then you could launch it at an enemy and blow them to smithereens. It is so, so good. It is honestly broken right now, as you could deal, you could one-shot any enemy in the game, pretty much. Um, I think if you hit the heavy directly, you could one-shot them, but it has to be a direct hit. But you could easily kill lights, easily kill mediums, do a lot of damage to a heavy, or even potentially completely kill a heavy. You can even wipe a team with it. It does a crazy, crazy amount of damage, and it's just so good. And I, it probably will get nerfed eventually, but as of right now, it's just nuking is just really powerful. And if you're a heavy player, you should be nuking. That should be part of your job as a heavy player. Another good thing for C4 is it's like the RPG where you could blow up wall ceilings and kind of get the objective down to the floor you want it to be on or whatever the case might be. And cause a lot of destruction. That's kind of part of the heavy job is to cause a lot of destruction. Then as for reserves, um, like I said, I have, well, I have the Lewis gun just cause, you know, in case I want to go with the long range option, I have sledgehammer to have fun. And these two, I honestly would not use cause these options are just so, so, so good that I wouldn't even touch these. They're just kind of sitting in my reserve. I, I don't ever use them at all. I don't touch them at all. Um, so I don't recommend these at all. Definitely these three gadgets are the only gadgets you should be using right now. And yeah, that is everything for all the classes in the game. Oh, and it just kicked me out. So I finished just in time. Yeah, that is for the best loadouts. That being the best specialization, the best weapons and the best gadgets for every single build within the game. That being the light, medium and heavy. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys found something useful in this video. And uh, if you did, then please give the video a like. But uh, that's gonna be it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, then again, please give it a like. And if you guys want more content like this, then please, please subscribe to the channel. Yeah, bye guys. Have a good one.